This box contains the most complicated and skill-intensive Magic the Gathering format I have ever heard of. You have asked us to play Dan Dan, the format where you share one deck, one graveyard, one color, and the only creature you play is one fish that dies to piracy charm. This format requires skill and a near-perfect memory, and honestly, I am not the right person for the job. So I took two far better Magic players than I am, and I will let them discover and hopefully solve this format along with you. Let's high roll. Let's high roll. Ah! Oh. Okay. I, I don't even know if it's good to go. <laughs> I wanted to start. Here's the first thing you're gonna start. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I've never played Dunnan before. I've heard people talk about it and it's supposed to be very grindy and especially about controlling the top of the shared library. So my starting hand seems still very good uh, because Brainstorm, Telling Time and Mental Note all do exactly I'll that. I'll play. <laughs> An island, it's, uh, it's a big surprise. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I'm already a card ahead, isn't it sick? Um, I'm gonna play a remote island. All right, my turn. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw. So this is Dun Dun, the only creature in the whole pile and also the namesake of the format. A 4-1 fish that relies on islands on both sides. It's very weird only playing with this one creature, so this will be the only source of damage in the entire game. I'll play a second island, and honestly, I, I don't know if this is a good play, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start the beatdown. So this is the creature that the format is named after, Dandan. Dan. It's a two mana 4-1 fish. Uh, I have to sacrifice it if I control no islands, luckily I do. Uh, and it can't attack unless you control an island. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So right now, it can't attack. I mean, yes, right now I'm not doing the beatdown. <laughs> maybe, maybe I just never play an island. <laughs> Go ahead. Untap, draw. Oh, that must be the best land ever. For my second land drop, I actually drew the Temple of Epiphany, which is great in so many ways. First of all, it's not an island, so Jamin can't even attack me, but also it makes red mana. And I know there are two cards in the deck with Mystic Retrieval that need red mana as a flashback card. And it's very important because effectively flashbacking the spell is a card in my hand. So it means that once we get to the turn of having 10 lands, I can use that red mana for an extra card. So I'm very happy if I have them and Jamin doesn't. All right, I will play a Temple of Epiphany oh. and uh, use the Temple to scry one. Hmm, I think that's good. Okay, go ahead. I'll untap. Do you control any islands, mm. Topo? I have a Temple of Epiphany and a remote Eisen. Hmm. All right, uh, I'll play another one for that mm -hmm. and I'll pass the turn to you. At the end of the turn, I would like to play an Amulet of Visions saying all your basic lands change. All right, so all of them become something else uh, until end of turn, I guess? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that resolves. So, right. so I, I'm gonna choose mountains. Yeah. Because they're very cool. All right, so I don't control any islands. Nah. So this done done. Should have planned ahead. Should have planned ahead. Vision Charm turns all my islands into mountains. So because of the clause that says, if you control no islands, sacrifice done done, my done done dies. Okay. Go ahead. Have one mana removal spell. Ooh, I like that card. Also, don't we share the same graveyard? Yes, of course. So so technically, I don't know if order is important, but this one resolved first. Yeah. And then we have your Dundun. I will attempt to cast my Dundun. All right. Wait. No, 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 <laughs> no, Tuffle, you cast the Dundun. You said you, ca you, said you cast the Dundun. You cast the Dundun, <laughs> You I saw it. It was on the battlefield. <laughs> I will play an island and then play my Dandan. Seems like a wise decision to first play an island. Go ahead. It was. Please don't kill my Dandan. At end of turn, I'll cycle my lonely sandbar. Oh, interesting. And draw a card. Cycling the lonely sandbar here feels like it doesn't use its full potential, right? Because it could mess with a future brainstorm of Tafel or maybe something like a setup telling time, memory lapse, you know, some of the library manipulation. But I'm so low on interaction and action that I want to do it now. And then I think I'll untap. I'll take my draw. It's time for another island. It's time for another Dandan. Dun. Oh. It is. Oh, time okay, another dun -dun. okay, okay. Go ahead. I will untap. 
draw. So now since we have developed a board and we both have done that, I have a decision because I have Ray of Command and Ray of Command is one of the strongest cards I feel in the whole pack because not only does it kind of change the damage trace, also if Jamin plays two Dundans, I can take one, block the other and then create a two-form which is so hard to come by. So my plan is to not block, let Jamin hit me and then start re-attacking because once he plays the second Dundan, I'm gonna get ahead on cards. We play a Lonely Sandbar actually and pass the turn. I think I'll start by casting Telling Time. Mm, mastery Wait. is achieved when Telling Time becomes Telling Time what to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a two mana instant. I look at the top three cards of my library. I put one on top, one on the bottom and one into my head. I would like to memory lapse the Telling Time. Yeah, that's Fine. Love it. Yeah, just hey. goes to the top. Thank you. Uh, no worries, no worries. Um, so, uh, mental note, one mana, I put the top two cards of my library into my graveyard. So, that's the telling time. And diminishing returns. And then I draw a card. So with Jamin milling the diminishing returns, I also know now that there's no diminishing return left in the deck because there are only two in the whole pile. And you see, it's those kind of little advantages about the deck and your hand that you see over the course of the game that makes you gain advantage because you can exclude a lot of the cards that Jamin can hold. So once we have access to all of those cumulative ideas and informations, we can use them because we can know once Jamin is down to a few cards, he can have the reset button of diminishing returns. I'll play another island. Yeah, from my end, honestly, I think we can trade Dundans. I'm fine with that. I'll right. take it. All 16. Right. First blood. Go ahead. So now I unfortunately don't draw telling time. Hmm. Uh, well, we're gonna hit back. Sure, 16. Nice. And they say it's a slow format. <laughs> mm, actually, I would like to cast a telling time. Yeah, that resolves. Mm. One, two, three. So, we're gonna put one on the top, one on the bottom, and one in my hand. So I feel this one goes to my hand. I'm really happy that this is on the bottom of the library. And you can draw this one, because All right. that's very fair. And telling time resolved, and I will play an island and give the turn to you. I'll untap. I guess I'll start things off by casting a Brainstorm. Ooh. The more I think about it, the more broken Brainstorm becomes in this format. Because, you know, in Legacy it's awesome because you get to shuffle away the bad cards. Imagine not only shuffling them away, just giving them to your opponent. Actually, I would like a Brainstorm. Sure. Nice. We love to see it. Since the format is all about manipulating the library and drawing the good cards, Memory Lapse is so perfect because not only does it not give your opponent the spell, because you used it, it's usually on a great spell, right? And if it goes to the top of the library, guess who's gonna draw it next turn? It's me. I'll attack you for four. 12. Down to 12. Go ahead. I untap, draw. <laughs> right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We worked hard for it. We'll cast a brainstorm. Sure. Nice. One, two, three. Uh, hmm. Three cards in hand. One of them done done. Yep. Brainstorm resolves. And I will attack with a done done. Sure. 12. Down to 12. I'll draw. Mm -hmm. Yes, eight. Down to eight. Yeah, I don't have anything to do. Uh, he I says holding two dundons. You're <laughs> lying. Go ahead. You're just lying, eh? Okay, you know what? We're just gonna accept it. I have no idea what happens. We'll draw a card. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? So I explained to the viewers that this card can't be in the deck. So I was confused that I drew it, but I put it back with the brainstorm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yes, attack. Down to eight. Okay. Ah, uh, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna draw, and Tafel, I hate to break it to you, but this race is not in your favor. Currently, I'm still winning the race, and the way Tafel plays, I would guess that he will go down to four, and at that point, I will swing with the Dundon, and Tafel will have to do something 
about that to prevent the lethal attack. And at that point, I will start committing more dundons to the board again. Something smells fishy, eh? <laughs> I'll, I'll attack. I'll go to four. Yep. And Toffel, uh, I've got a special one for you. Uh, I've got I've got a dundon. <laughs> um, sure. And you know what? I've got a second dundon. It seems to me like German is panicking all the dundons on the battlefields. So I kind of just need to let one resolve and maybe deal with the others. And I'm very happy with German spending all the mana. The more money he spends now, the less money he has to interact in my turn. And you know, my turn is going to be the good one. Mm. I'm sorry. I have to make you pay two more. Okay, sure. This this one is countered. Wait, you're not sad? I, I, I mean, I, I should have played the island, but don't worry. I came prepared. There's another Dundun. <laughs> you really were Dundun flooded. I, I'm kind of. This is big bang strategy. This game has shifted from trying to control the top of the library and this, you know, Dundun gameplay to both of us committing to a race. It feels like both of us are pretending like we have the better answer to the final turns of the race. But huh, little does Toffel know, I don't have anything. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, come on. Gone, gone, gone. I mean, you had two counter spells and I'm up a dundon. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You know what? You're not up. Um, Life, my friend. I am. Uh, I'm at eight. Uh, ooh, a dundon. Well, I'm gonna ray of command your dundon. Wait, what's ray? Untapped target creature and opponent controls and gain control of it until the end of turn. That creature is unaffected by summoning sickness. Oh, the, the beatdown plan worked. Well, how, okay, how am I supposed to play around an act of treason in a mono blue deck? You don't, you just lose. Good game. <laughs> wow, that was that was a fun game. I mean, oh yeah, I know <laughs> it was it was enjoyable. I enjoyed don't it. think it was the intent of all of it. No, everything I read about Dunnan was like, oh, it's gonna be so grindy and so you know mind tricky and stuff. This was just kind of beating each other up for four. If you want to play Dundan for yourself, the decklist will be linked down below in the comments. And also, if you like this kind of content, then please let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have a suggestion for a different kind of video or something entirely different, please let us know. Also, consider subscribing because that really helps out the channel. With that being said, for this video, we're Dundan. <laughs>